have been engaged in my life. General, I can't hear you. Just a minute. Just a minute. Do I hear you now? <laughs> Thank you very much. There are days in my life in which I have been overwhelmed. I can't think of a more overwhelming day than this is, despite the fact that I've had some wonderful experiences in the past. I'm particularly grateful for the company of the Rick Court to come to Tallahassee to present these awards, and I'm very appreciative of that, I assure you. I, I didn't prepare any remarks to say thank you because I didn't know what I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> but the true fact is that when I became a Brigadier General back in 1968, I found that when I traveled in uniform and had ribbons on my jacket, if people had questions about you know, about ribbons, they didn't ask anything about the war. They want to know about the ribbons. So I decided I ought to be an expert about that. So I studied real hard about all those military decorations. And you just heard me say military decorations, yes? That's all I thought there was in the world. <laughs> and then when I was told by a phone call to my son a couple of weeks ago that I would be receiving a Distinguished Service Medal and a Distinguished Service Medal from the Secretary of the Navy and the Secretary of Defense. And I said, wait a minute. I don't know anything about those medals. Where did they come from? <laughs> I went online and found out that they come from a very legitimate source. award. <laughs> and what I don't understand is why I didn't know more about them before now. <laughs> but here we are. <coughs> the fact that the Commandant and others would recognize the contributions they cite me for in our friendship with Japan after all these years. The fact of life is that uh, my relationships with the Japanese grew out of a simple philosophy that was purely my own. And I decided after a series of events in which I was returned to Japan and other capacities that the people that I was working with in Japan had been the same people I had been fighting against on Iwo Jima. It didn't take long for the thought to permeate my brain structure that says we're working together. That was a realization that took me a while to come to, but the fact of life is, I suddenly realized that they were my friends, they were not my enemies. They individually were not my enemies in 1945 either, even though at that moment I thought perhaps they were. I guess I found myself in a position of not believing that I was ready to shift gears in my mental approach, but I decided, let's do it, let's do it. So we did it. And I got rid of all this baggage about hatred and dislike and all that kind of stuff. People used to say to me, and they stopped saying it lately, I don't know why. They said, how can you be friends with people like that who were trying to kill you in 1945? I said, well, the tables are pretty even. I was trying to kill them, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made out, and I survived, and I'm here today to celebrate the fact that the Japanese are my friends. They're not my enemies. They never were. The individual, Joe Nakazone or whoever, he wasn't killing me because of who I am. He was killing me because I was there to take away his country's assets. I was there to further the defense of his nation. And that's what he was trying to do, just as I was trying to take away his assets and end the war. 
And I will only make one statement relative to the combat on Iwo Jima, because I don't want this to turn into a real war story. The fact is, on Iwo Jima, I discovered that the important thing is the objective and not who you're fighting. I appreciated the opportunity that I could have the opportunity to correct that in later years. And I'm so glad that God led me in that direction. I was not aware, y'all know, that I had a tribute in the congressional record. I did not, I was not informed of it then, and I was only informed today, thanks to you. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know everything I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being here. I'm overwhelmed by the fact that this room didn't have enough chairs in it. I'm overwhelmed by the friendship that's here. And to my Westminster Oaks family, I want you to understand something. I'm a Westminster Oaks resident now for the rest of my days. I'm not going to live anywhere else. Whatever days I have left, I'm going to spend right here. So you are not just my neighbors, you are my friends and my family. And when I was told that we would have some kind of ceremony today, my immediate reaction was, I want the ceremony to be open to my neighbors. I want my family to share in this moment, which I think is overwhelming to me. So they allowed that, and I'm so glad that so many of you have found time to be here and share this day with me. I tell you again, General Miller, thank you so much for your taking time to do this. It's a tremendous event in my life, and I'm most, most appreciative to you and all those who made it so. To all of you again, thank you for coming. I hope that uh, when the, the Commandant and his party have to agree and get on with other things, that uh, you will hang around and uh, have some cookies and punch or whatever. And uh, I will be down and, and roll around wherever. <laughs> <laughs>